Understanding your electricity bill isn't that important, if I'm honest, for 90% of the people out there. However, after speaking with my 14-year-old daughter, EVK is now EV teenager, I've come to realise that over the years I've spoken to thousands of people through this channel, and her as well recently, and there's a bit of a lack of information out there in terms of how to understand your electricity bill. But as I said, most of it you don't really need to know unless you're interested. But there is a crucial part of it that gives you the key information to then go and find the cheapest tariff. And that will save you money. That I do consider very important. Now, if you already know this, this video clearly isn't for you. This is, as I said, is more of an educational thing, which is something I think is very much lacking in general school education in terms of just basic financial knowledge. So in this case, understanding enough of the electricity bill to save you money. Now, the first thing I want to do is mention something that people fall into quite a lot. There's, there's an easy trap where you think you're saving money, but in reality, you're not saving any money at all. And in fact, it could put you in a position where you're spending a lot more per month the following year. This happened to me a week, week and a half ago from someone just up the road. And it's happened to people I've known for years through the channel, personally, and it's about the monthly payments that come out from your energy provider, British Gas, Eon, whoever you're with. Let's imagine, in this example, you're paying £200 per month. That's an estimate, that's a guess, that's them either looking at your previous year's usage, or if you're a new customer, going off what you tell them in terms of what you think you'll use, and then going, right, okay, we think you're gonna use 2,400 pounds in a year, so we'll charge you 200 quid a month. So the bills are nice and kind of flat across the year, because obviously you'll typically use more in winter than summer. So this way you can budget a little better, and there's nothing wrong with that, but the trap, that uh, I see people falling into is, again, just like the person up the road last week, I've rung up my energy company and they've reduced my monthly repayment, or payments should I say, by 20 pounds a month. I'm saving 20 quid a month. You're not, as I said. That's just reducing the estimate. So what you will use at the end of the year. Now, so let's imagine that your actual usage, because just like petrol, like food, you pay for what you use. This is just a guess. So let's imagine in this example again that you've actually used £2,700 a year in electricity. So we've got, okay then, you've used slightly more than we think, so we'll up the amount of monthly payments to reflect that. But you also owe us £300 from the previous year, so this is gonna go from £200 to say £220, £230 a month, because we need last year's back as well as the fact that you used more. So the person up the road, again, using this specific example, they think they have saved 20 pounds a month. But what will actually happen is that instead of saving 20 pounds a month temporarily, so let's put that to what they've got now, they're thinking, yes, 180 quid a month. They're now only paying out 2,160 pounds for the year, which is great. Again, it makes you feel like you've saved some money. And I guess you have for the next 12 months, but then, you will owe them quite a lot. So what will happen is that they will up the payments and you owe them 540 pounds from the previous year. So this 180 quid a month goes up to 240, maybe, something like that, 240 quid a month, which to you will look like a 60 quid a month increase, which is massive in percentage terms compared to what you used to pay. So you could argue that the guesstimate needs to be as accurate as possible or maybe overestimate so you're paying them more than you will probably use. However, again, this needed mentioning because it happens time and time again where someone just rings up, they haven't put them on a cheaper tariff, which is what I'll show you in a minute. They've put them, well, they've just reduced the monthly repayments, not repayments, payments. So the estimate is, is, is even further off and you're just, gonna, you're just delaying paying for later. So let's use petrol as an example. You put 50 litres in, you pay for 50 litres. You pay per litre at least in the UK. With electricity, you pay per kilowatt hour. Now, there's another video that explains the difference between kilowatt and kilowatt hour in the channel, but to simplify this, it doesn't really matter what that means. All it means 
that's important to us anyway in this case is you pay per kilowatt hour. So the average usage per day for a UK household is apparently eight kilowatt hours per day. At the moment, you'll probably pay something like 25 pence per kilowatt hour. So that's simply eight times 25p, and that's how much you pay. So that's what we need to find on your bill. Dig out your bill, have a look at the pence per kilowatt hour, I'll come to stand in charge in a second, and see what you're paying. Let's say it's 25p. So at the moment, you're paying 25 pence per kilowatt hour. Wow, that's really bad, right? <laughs> Quick edit, no notice. So if you look at another tariff, let's say you go on a comparison site or you just go direct with another provider, let's say from Octopus to Eon, and they're only charging you 23 pence per kilowatt hour, well, you're saving 16 pence on average per day which doesn't sound like a lot, but every little helps. Because that's what you actually pay. This again is an estimate. The monthly amount that comes out of your bank account is almost immaterial because it's a guess. This is what you actually pay. So that's what we need to concentrate on. How much per kilowatt hour? Now, there's another part to the bill called the standing charge. Think of this like, how do I explain it to my daughter before? Like line rental on a mobile phone. Whether you use the phone or not, you pay that amount per month. It's like the uh, connection cost from the electricity grid to your house. That's what it covers. That, I think at the moment, is something like 60, 65 pence per day. So again, even if you use nothing, you will still pay that. So like the pence per kilowatt hour, if you are currently paying 60 pence per day, let's see if I can actually write this a little neater, no. <laughs> then the new tariff that you might be looking at, if that's anything less, then of course you will save on a daily basis. Now it does complicate it slightly because you might find that that is more expensive, but that is cheaper. That's where you need to do a, a bit of basic maths, should we say. So to know how much you will save, you need to know how much you will use. So what we need to do, and this is the boring bit, this is the thing that people will probably not want to do. It's like car insurance, it just comes across as too much hassle. But what I will say to that, what I will counter to that is that the difference between a good tariff, as in a cheap one, and a standard, not very cheap tariff that a lot of people are still on, could be hundreds of pounds a year. This will take you an hour, an hour and a half, per year of your time. Imagine I asked you, to do this for me, for my house. Here are my bills, I want you to do these calculations. It's taking you probably an hour, an hour and a half out of your day, and I'll give you 250 quid just to do that for me. I think 99% of people out there snap my hand off. That's one hell of an hourly rate. But doing it for yourself, there's a lot of, there's too many people out there like car insurance going, oh well, I can't really be bothered, it's a bit of a faff, I'm not really sure what's going on. So hopefully, this will encourage people, even if it's just one person, my job is done, to actually put a little bit of effort into it and then you'll save money. And saving money is a good thing, it's a very good thing. The most accurate way would be to look over the last 12 months. Now, some providers maybe give you this on a, an online account, some you will have to go through each bill. But essentially, if you look at January, February, March, 12 months previously of what you used concurrently, so it needs to be all the year, not just summer, not just winter, because as I said, you will use more in winter than summer. So look at 12 months, how much you used in terms of kilowatt hours of electricity. It will say on the bill, quite plainly, how much you use that month. You basically just need to add 12 months up. From that, you can times it by the per kilowatt hour, per kilowatt hour and figure out how much it will cost you. Then you can look at your new tariff and go, well, if that's 23 pence for a full year, this is how much I will save. Let me just put that on here now. So we'll say that, just to round it off, you use 3,000 kilowatt hours worth of electricity in a year, okay? At 25 pence per kilowatt hour, that is 750 pounds. If we change that and go, oh, well, let, let's say you've got a really good tariff. You're actually paying 21 pence per kilowatt hour. So that's 4p per kilowatt hour saving. It doesn't sound like a lot, does it? But it will be 630 pounds. 
So this is your saving based on your yearly usage times the per kilowatt hour price. So you've gone from 25 to 21p and that's 120 quid a year saving. And that's, this is a fairly low usage, I would say. If you get an electric vehicle, if you get a heat pump or if you go electric in some way that you weren't before, then this goes up so that the tariff is everything. Again, I've seen people drive ac across town to go to a petrol station that's one, two pence per litre cheaper, but they won't do this. The standing charge is essentially the same sort of thing. 365 times the standing charge, 60 pence, versus the new tariff. Then you add that to that and think, well, this is how much I'm saving. Sometimes switching tariffs, if you're happy with your provider for the sake of 30 quid a year, it's probably not worth it. But as soon as you start getting into three figures or more, so to reiterate, this is just a guesstimate. It's important to get it as accurate as possible, but in terms of saving money, that pence per kilowatt hour is the only thing that matters. Find that out, it's on your bill, every bill you get for each month. You've then, of course, got to go and find a cheaper tariff. Comparison sites are an obvious start. Then go to a few major ones. And I would personally stick with the major providers, your Octopus, Eon, British Gas, uh, EDA, you know, all, all the usual ones, because there's a lot of cheap tariffs out there that have disappeared over the years by companies that have tried to beat the big ones and then lost and gone bust, and it's caused a lot of disruption. So I do personally put a little bit into, I'd be happy paying a little bit more or even a bit more than that, to get better service, to get someone answering the phone, and to make sure that they're actually gonna stay around. Now, when you look at a new provider's prices, they don't give you the pence per kilowatt hour. This infuriates me. They say, well, how much are you gonna use a year? Do you know this? Uh, what size house have you got? How many bedrooms have you got? Are you a heavy user? Are you a low user? They try and basically estimate how much you will pay to try and hide the fact that they may be more expensive or not than other people. So only once you get past that point where you put all this rubbish in, which annoys people, I think, that it then gives you the tariff details. And even then you have to kind of maybe click on the terms and conditions before they give you the only thing that matters. Pence per kilowatt hour standing charge. Once you get that for that tariff for you, write it down and look at what you currently have to that. Now, this one I think I need to mention, but for the purposes of this simplistic video, I'm not gonna go into too much depth because this is something that comes at like stage two if you're really interested in this sort of thing and that's that some tariffs have different rates depending on whether you're it's during the day or typically at night that becomes more complicated because to know that you need to know how much you use at night if you have a car for example you charge it at night and how much you use during the more expensive day or peak rate period so the calculations get a little more complex but still are fairly simple so just bear that in mind. There are tariffs out there where you will have two rates per day rather, or, or even more, some of them, rather than just one flat rate. So this is, this is I'm, I'm deliberately keeping this as simple as possible because the purpose of this video is so my daughter can watch it and know how to at least save some money. What am I paying? That's the only thing that matters versus what are they offering. Let me know if this is something you do yearly. Let, you know, let me know if you've never done this. Is this giving you a little bit of an impetus to do it? Are you young enough? I mean, judging by the analytics of my channel, most people are older than me. The vast majority of viewers are older than me. Um, there's very few 13 to 18 year olds, as YouTube puts it, watching my channel, which is probably a given. But it is something that, well, do you agree with me? Should this be part of basic education in schools? Not just what I've said here, but financial education. I know they do some things, but it doesn't go in, into it enough for me personally. Fingers crossed again, that has helped somebody out and job is done. So thank you ever so much for watching. See you soon. Please do like and subscribe because if you like this sort of crap, then, well, you're not going to want to miss out on more of it, are you? And if you remember, you get it for Sunday instead of Friday. And there are members only videos as well that will never go public. That's 99p a month. That's a bargain, that's an utter bargain. I mean, that gets you, what, four kilowatt hours worth of, that's a half a day's electric usage. <laughs> Have I sold this? I don't know if I've sold this very well. Anyway, thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.